When I first started learning DSA, the most popular language for doing DSA was C++. And even for computer programming, pretty much everyone used C++. So I also started learning DSA in C++ and I solved a lot of problems. I learned STL and then eventually I learned that there's not a lot of scope for doing development in C++. And eventually I knew that I wanted to go into backend development. So I started learning Java because Java development has a lot of job openings and there's a lot of opportunities in Java backend, right? So I started learning Java as well. And now once I would go for the interviews of, you know, a lot of companies, a majority of the companies, the interviewer would ask me a DSA question and I'll give the correct logic and I'll start solving it in C++. But sometimes the interviewer will ask me that, can you do this problem in Java? Can you solve this problem in Java? And because I did not have a lot of good knowledge in Java as much as I had in C++, sometimes I would get a lot of syntax errors, I'd get a lot of issues and that does not create a good impression in front of the interviewer. Now, I know that the logic is the most important for doing DSA, but if you're not able to solve the problem in the language for which you're going to be in for, for which you're interviewing, then that sets off a bad impression. If you're going for a Java role and you're not able to solve the problem in Java, that is not going to give a good impression to the interviewer. So again, eventually I started learning Java more in depth. I started doing DSA in Java. I learned collections, I did a lot more, and then finally I was able to start cracking interviews. So in this video, what I'm going to suggest to you and what we're going to talk about is how you can master DSA in Java. So if you are someone who wants to go into Java development, you want to go into Java backend development, which has a lot of openings right now, which has a lot of scope for the future as well, then what I suggest that instead of going into C++, you can start off with Java, okay? And you can start off with doing DSA in Java then you can go further into Java development. You can go into further into a framework like Spring Boot and the things will be very easy for you. And you won't have to do the extra step that, you know, I had to do. So we're going to discuss how you can go from a beginner or a noob in Java all the way to mastering Java, all the way to mastering DSA in Java, and all the way to cracking your interview so that you're able to become a Java developer at your dream company. We're going to discuss everything in details. Let's get started. Now, the first thing is that obviously you have to master Java. That is the first thing. But if you're not accustomed to an object oriented programming language, then I suggest that you understand object oriented programming first, like the principles of it, what it means. I want you to understand first, because generally what happens, people start with C in college, in BTEC, in engineering, the college teaches you C, then you move to C++ for majority of the students and then to Java. So between Java and C++, you still have some similarity because C++ is also object oriented, partially you can say, but C is purely structured. So if you're using C++ like C, then Java and C++ will be completely different. Okay, so I want you to understand object oriented programming first. Like what is object oriented programming? What are the four pillars of object oriented programming? What are classes? What are objects? There is a little bit of theory involved. What are relations? What are things like that? So I want you to understand the concepts first, okay? Then you can move to coding eventually, but first I want you to be clear with your concepts. So the best thing to get your concepts clear of object oriented programming is Geeks for Geeks. Geeks for Geeks have some amazing articles in which they explain everything very beautifully and they also explain with code, which you can see in Java. So I'll be giving all the resources in the description. I'll also give a YouTube playlist. If you want to go much deeper or if you feel like you need extra help, I'll also give a YouTube playlist so you can see the resources and understand object oriented programming first. If you understand only the basics of it, that should be fine. Then you can move to learning Java, the basic syntax. Okay. So learning any programming language is more or less the same thing. You start off with the basic syntax, you learn what variables are, you learn how to make for loops, how to use if else statements, how to use for each loop, and you learn basic data structures like array strings, Right, you learn all of these things. So learn the basic syntax. For learning the basic syntax of Java, the best website is Java T Point. Okay, you can go on Java T Point. You can learn the basic syntax. Again, if you want videos, I'll give some playlist, free playlist from YouTube that you can use for learning the basic syntax. Now, once you're good with the basic syntax, once you're comfortable with Java, now comes the most important thing. And I cannot stress this enough. A lot of people skip out on this. A lot of people don't focus on this. And because of this, they have implementation issue while solving on lead code. They're not able to, you know, use Java completely or fully for solving problems. And this important thing is collections. Now, I know everyone does collections, but not the way that it's needed. 
If you take a look at C++ STL, which is the counterpart of Java collections, it is okay if you don't have much in-depth knowledge of STL. It will still work for you. But for Java collections, you need to have a good understanding of how it's working. You need to have a good understanding of how is the internal implementation. You need to have a good understanding of interfaces. You need to have a good understanding of classes. You need to have a good understanding of, you know, what extends what, what implements what. If you don't know that, then you're going to have issues in the implementation. So focus on collections a lot. Focus on the logic behind collections rather than just, you know, learning the formulas, learning how to instantiate. Focus on what goes on behind the scene as well. And the best resources for collections, despite of a lot of people making videos on collection, the best one shot video for learning collections by far is by Redi Datta. So I've seen a lot of videos I saw in college, I saw later also. And the best video is definitely Redi Datta's video on collection. So I guess within three and a half hours, something he has explained collections entirely. And he has not just explained the basic things like how you use array list, what are the functions in an array list. He has also explained the like internal working of it. He has also explained the what goes back behind the scene. Okay. So just watch that video and you will be pretty good with collections. I'll also suggest make notes that you can refer to later down the line because obviously you'll not be able to like retain all the knowledge that you see from the video. So make notes, get good with collections. You cannot miss this step. All right. Now, once you're good with collections, you can go straight to solving problems. Go on lead code. You can see they have top 150 interview questions. They have lead code 75. So you can start solving questions from there. But first, initially, I want you to get comfortable with solving problems in Java. So you can only solve problems for arrays and strings initially, what I would suggest. Solve problems for, for arrays and strings and solve easy problems for the time being. Okay. Get comfortable with using Java for doing DSA problems. Once you're comfortable, then you can go deep into DSA. Okay. And I've made a lot of videos about DSA. I've been a DSA trainer for around three years now. I've trained hundreds and hundreds of students about DSA. And the main advice that I give, which works for pretty much every student that I get. And the main advice which I give to every student is that mastering DSA is a three step process. Okay. What are those three steps? Those three steps are first, the theory or the concepts. Second, the implementation and third, solving problems. So what do I mean by that? Let me explain. First, you go topic by topic. For DSA, it is very important that you do a structured way of problem solving rather than, you know, random problem solving. For computer programming, random problem solving is fine. But for DSA, I suggest you do a structured way of solving problems. So you can find a sheet. Any sheet is fine. You can find a particular topic, let's say linked list. Now, First thing that you're going to do, you're going to understand the theoretical concepts. You're going to understand how does deletion work? How does insertion work? You can take a piece of pen and paper, make a linked list, make notes, and then see like with the pen and paper, you can see by drawing how the connection is being made, how the connection is being removed and understand things, you know, in your head visually. Once you're done with that, once you're able to, you know, draw it out and understand it conceptually, theoretically, the next thing is implementing it. And I don't mean using collections in collections. You can do it in one line, right? You can just say linked list and then instantiate it. Right. But what I mean is creating it yourself, creating it from scratch. Okay. So what I mean is create a class node, create a class linked list. Okay. Use one node to point to the other node and create a linked list yourself. That's what I mean. This is going to help you in two ways. First, it's going to improve your Java skills because obviously you'll be coding in Java. You'll be understanding classes better. You'll, you might be using interfaces and all these things. Second, it will help you in the interviews because a lot of times I've seen in the interview that the interviewer says he don't use collection, implement it from scratch, implement the data structure from scratch. Okay. So you need to be good with implementation and over lead code, you may not find a lot of implementation problems. So even if you don't find questions like that, do it yourself. And if you get stuck, then you have a few websites who have given implementation. Again, they will also be in the description. Everything will be in the description box. Don't worry about that. Okay. Now, once you do the second step, which is implementation, the third step is without a doubt solving problems, which is the most important thing for solving problems. What I suggest for each topic, this is the ratio you should have. Okay. And I'm saying the ratio, not the number of problems you can do like this. You can do say three easy problems for three medium problems for two hard problems. Okay. Now 
I don't suggest doing a lot of hard problems, especially as a beginner, because you might get demotivated. And to be honest, not a lot of companies ask hard questions. They are pretty much satisfied with medium or easy medium most of the time. Okay. So maintain this ratio. Try to solve as many questions as you can. There's no magic number. As many as it makes you comfortable, solve that many. Okay. Now, once you're done with problem solving, then you can do random solving. Okay. Then you can go and give contests on lead code. You can give contests on geeks for geeks. You can give contests on even code forces, code chef, whatever you want. Okay. So finish DSA completely. Solve each problem in Java. And one tip that I'll give you right now is after you solve the question, don't let it go. Go to the discuss section and see the other ways people have done it. So people will say in the discuss section, ki, you know, best solution in Java, 100% time in Java, things like that. So you can pick any of them and see how they have coded it. In Is there any way that they have coded it better? Is there any way you could have made your code more optimized? Is there any way you could have written cleaner code, you know, more clear code? If you do like that, then that will also help you in coding better. Because although DSA is more about logic, it is also about coding, especially in the interview, they will also be checking how you code. Okay. Because you will be coding in the company, right? So do all of this, start off with the basic syntax, master collections. After that, go on to lead code. After that, follow the three step process for every data structure and algorithm, then do random solving. Then you can go into whatever development you want, whatever framework you want. I suggest Spring Boot. And if you want to know more about that, I've made an entire video about how you can become a Java developer. In that video, I've talked more about the frameworks, how you can learn them. I'll give a link to that video as well. You can check that out as well. But that's pretty much the crux of it, right? If you do DSA in Java, it will be very easy for you to crack interviews where the role is of a Java developer because they will still ask you DSA, right? Even if you go for a Java backend role, majority of the product based companies, they will still ask you DSA. And if you already have a good hand in solving DSA with Java, it is going to help you in both making projects, learning her frameworks and obviously clearing the interviews as well. So that's pretty much all I wanted to say for this video. If you have any other doubts, if you want to know more about anything or if you want to make a video on a particular topic, then feel free to leave a comment about that. I'll be sure to get back to you. And that's all. Thank you.